Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this quick guide showing you how to use the bunker in GTA Online effectively. First up, the cost. The minimum amount of money you're going to be spending on a bunker is $1,650,000. This is without upgrades, which will cost you an additional $1.7 million, making it a total of $3.4 million. Luckily, you don't have to buy the upgrades right away. You can decide to already start your bunker business without the upgrades, because when you buy an upgrade, it will automatically make your product more valuable. It will make your supplies run out quicker though if you don't have upgrades. Speaking of supplies, always buy supplies. The resupply missions are a pain in the ass and take a long time. The $75,000 you're going to be spending on them is hardly a loss when there's other stuff you can do like racing or just simply messing around in free roam while your bunker makes you money in the background. It's also worth noting that Rockstar does regular discounts on both the bunkers and on upgrades for them, so it's always worth waiting for this discount to happen if you're low on cash. I personally do cover event weeks in my event week guides every Thursday, so if you want to keep up to date with that, then stay tuned to the channel. When it comes to location, it all comes down to personal preference, but the best overall location is going to be Shumash, followed by Road 68. The advantage Shumash has is that it's close to the city, thus making sail missions a whole lot easier, while Route 68 has the advantage that it's closer to other businesses. This will mean though that you have to cough up an additional $300,000, so choose wisely. As mentioned before, upgrades aren't really needed right away, but when you have the money for them, then the only two you're really going to need is going to be the equipment and the staff upgrades. Security isn't really necessary. In the almost five years of having a bunker, I've never had a bunker raid happen to me ever. A simple trick is to quit your CEO or your MC club whenever you're done doing your business and raids will never happen. Meanwhile, the cosmetic upgrades don't add anything of value to your product. Gun locker can be useful if you want to make your own custom loadout and the shooting range allows you to win some extra stuff like t-shirts and five additional grenades in your inventory. Personal quarters allows you to spawn within the bunker and it's just going to be entirely up to you if you find any of this worth it. You can also decide to purchase a cheap garage or an apartment near your bunker for half the price so again entirely up to you what you want to do with it. A quick one about research. This stuff was mostly useful in 2015, but nowadays we do have better vehicles and the only stuff that is really worthwhile, in my opinion, is going to be the attachments and the ammo types for your Mark II weapons. Unfortunately though, this is purely RNG and the only two options you have is either to have it eat up your bunker supplies or dash out 225k per unlock. The best to do is to wait until Ruxer doesn't increase the research speed defense if you're not too fussed about any of this. But if you are curious about this, all the upgrades are basically all upgrades to the gun running vehicles. So I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can see what vehicles you'll be unlocking upgrades for. A full bar of supplies takes 2 hours and 20 minutes to run out. From there you have two choices. Buy more and continue generating products or go for a sale mission. As a solo player, the moment you want to sell is when your product is no further than $175,000, so after your supplies run out. Beyond this will result into multiple vehicles as shown on screen. It is possible to sell multiple vehicles on your own, but you need the right sale mission for this and also be quick about it. Spawning a buzzard from your CEO menu will be a good way to do so. Is it worth the risk? That's up to you. You can find a new session in case you get the wrong sale mission or you get attacked by Harry Potter on his broomstick. Finding a new session though will lose you $7,000 worth of value, so keep that in mind. Personally, I don't think it's worth the risk and seeing if you have a friend or a crewmate wants to lend you a hand is a much better idea. As mentioned before, there's more than one sale mission. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Get into a car, go to the location, get your money. Two of them, however, are terrible. These are the Meriwether sale, which can be recognized by the 0 out of 25 deliveries in the bottom right of your screen, as well as the three insurgent customs that have spawned. The June FAV sale, which makes you drive all over the place, and even with multiple people, this can be a tough one, because the June FAV likes to get stuck on stuff, even on your own crate. So be careful and don't reverse after you dropped off a crate. 
And last but not least, I should obviously also mention the high demand cash bonus. For every player in your lobby, you get an additional 1% extra money. So for example, you're selling for $200,000. Each player within your session will give you an additional $2,000 for simply just being there. Obviously, this is again a risk, but it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to take that. Luckily though, if you do get chased down by Harry Potter on his broomstick and he blows you up, you can decide to find a new session or just quit the game entirely and you will only lose seven thousand dollars and you can then either decide to try again or just go ahead and uh, wait until the seven thousand dollars has been regained but that was it for this one thank you all so very much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe for more and i'll see you all later